Hello, it's Alex. Welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. Today's video is my contribution to the So Frugal 23 challenge. It's being run by Sam and Ruan, the Yorkshire So Girl and Frugalissima. That's the other way around. Um, so, I'm sure you know about it, but just a little quick recap. Uh, the idea of this challenge is to encourage everybody to use some of the free sewing patterns that there are out there. It's a challenge in that you um, are encouraged to use a free sewing pattern and fabric that you already have, whether that's from your stash or duvet cover, you know, that kind of thing, other fabric that you might have in the house, and you make a garment using a free sewing pattern, take a picture of yourself, put it up on Instagram so it is an Instagram based challenge. Uh, the rev Everybody is doing it throughout the month of March so you've got a bit of time to make your garment or garments and then the reveal day is the 31st. There are a bazillion prizes to be had. Um, I suspect it's probably picked at random I would imagine. Um, I will put up some images of all the many, many sponsors that Sam and Rowan have managed to get. Um, and each day a different sewing vlogger is putting up a video of their ideas of some of the patterns that there are out there. So by the end of March you should have a huge, huge resource of free sewing patterns. Most days there are two vloggers so I am sharing today with Knots and Needles and I will put a link in the description box if you want to go and check out her video as well. So one of the the main kind of rule that you need to kind of work around with this is that it needs to be a free sewing pattern that's accessible to everybody. So not free as in your auntie gave it to you as a gift or it came free with a sewing magazine if no one else can access it. So I decided, everybody's got their own take on it, I decided that the way I would look at it is to think of things that I wanted to make for the next couple of months anyway. Um, and I've been looking at some of the spring trends. I don't consider myself somebody that necessarily goes along with trends, but I like to know what the trends are. And then if there's something that particularly appeals to me, I might kind of run with it. And this year, um, having kind of looked at some of those ideas that are coming out for the yeah for the next season. I have been drawn to a few things that I wanted to make anyway so what I decided to do was then source free sewing patterns that I could make those items with. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so first up everywhere all the kind of trend predictors all the shops high street shops to the kind of more high-end shops are all stocking denim maxi skirts. I can see why because I think it's an incredibly easy garment to wear. Most of us have worn a denim skirt at some point in our lives to varying lengths. Um, for me personally you may know that I really like long skirts so a maxi skirt is always going to appeal to me. Really really wearable item isn't it? A, a denim skirt you just throw it on with pretty much anything. Um, most of the skirts that are out there have a split at the front. Um, some of them are that style where it looks like they've been um, refashioned from a pair of jeans and I think there are people here on YouTube that will show you how to do that so I haven't gone down that route, I've gone down the sewing pattern route. But that is an alternative because you're still using fabric from your stash. So I've got two pattern options for you. The first one comes from Spoonflower. So if you're not aware of them, Spoonflower are a company that you can upload your own designs and they will print them onto a huge variety of different fabrics. Um, you can do things like wrapping paper, wallpaper, and you can also go on there and buy designs that other people have created. Um, I've never used them, I've always wanted to. Um, so they have this design and I think it may just be called the dogwood denim skirt because they recommend that you use their dogwood denim fabric in order to make it and um, it is your absolutely typical denim skirt pattern. 
two side pockets, uh, a waistband, I think there are belt loops on it and a fly front. It does look to be knee length, but obviously it's incredibly easy to increase that down to a maxi length and it would be relatively easy to make your own, the centre front seam into a split and then you can have it as high or low as you want to. Um, so I thought that was really good. Size wise, the range is pretty inclusive-ish. It goes up to a 47 inch hip and it starts, whatever size that is, it starts from a start size zero. So it's quite a wide range. And it looks like, I haven't pressed the link, but it does look like there is also a YouTube tutorial. So that could be a really good one for your absolutely traditional denim skirt. The alternative comes from the fabricstore.com. I suspect you're gonna hear, if you're following this hashtag, um, I suspect you're going to hear a lot about fabricstore.com. They are a company that provide what looks to be really beautiful linen fabric um, and they have a huge number of sewing patterns which are obviously all designed to be made on linen but of course you could choose pretty much any other woven fabric you might have. So this one is called the, I think it's called the Amelia, let me just check my notes. Okay, it's not called the Amelia at all. It's called the Anna Sophia pencil skirt. So obviously designed to be made out of linen, but I don't think there's any reason why you couldn't use denim for this if you wanted to. And this time it's a button through front, at the center front, buttons from waist, you know, all the way down. And again, the pattern that is provided is knee length, but very easy to add maxi length if that's the way you want it to go. It has the side pockets at the front, and I really like that button up front on a skirt, especially, it does always feel kind of spring, summerish, doesn't it, a button front skirt. Um, it's got all the darts that you need and all the rest of it, and this one does look like it's a really good size range. It goes up to a size 30, so that should cover the majority of us. Um, I really like both of those options. I do have some denim in my stash. Uh, in both, I've got two options. So this one I have is pretty uh, black denim. I'm fairly sure I would have bought that from my local fabric shop. And it has zero stretch in it. Um, it looks on camera like it might have a bit of a sheen, but it, it doesn't really. Um, but it is a black wash, which obviously is gonna fade with time. Um, I really like that and I think that that is probably what I will make it up in. But the alternative, and I seem to have enough of it as well, the alternative, inside out, um, has got a bit of, it's a dark blue wash. Um, it has got a tiny bit of stretch in it, but really you can't feel it too much. I only know it's there because I've pre-washed it and I can see where is it? I can see some of the elastane in it. Um, so whatever stretch they're in, in it, it's only a bit of comfort stretch. And for the purposes of this kind of a pattern, I wouldn't worry about it being, if you have got stretch denim, I don't think you need to worry about looking for a stretch based pattern. As long as you just don't stretch it when you're sewing it, it should be fine. So, but I think I'll go the black denim route. And, um, I think I haven't yet decided which skirt I'll go for, but I think it'd be a really useful garment for spring, summer, and bang on trend. So, following the trend thought, um, the other thing that's around very much, and it, it's one of those garments that we have, we wear all year, and then suddenly you get, you know, something very basic in your wardrobe becomes the thing that year. And this year, it seems to be a tank, you know, a bog standard stretch, round neck tank that can be worn under things or on its own when, huh, if ever, the weather, you know, is warm enough. Um, there is a really nice free tank pattern from Itch to Stitch. It's called the Largo Tank and it is exactly that. I mean, there's not a huge amount to say about it. It literally is a round neck or a scoop neck strappy tank. 
It requires obviously a stretch fabric. I think it needs about 50% stretch. I haven't checked out the size range, but itch to stitch as a rule are really good with their sizing. So I would imagine it's gonna be pretty good. I have got, it says it can be either four way or two way stretch. So most of the tanks that seem to be the, the ideal basic for this year are just plain white, nothing massively exciting. And I have, this is actually more of an off white, but anyway, it's not gonna show that on camera. It's a little bit thicker than a jersey. It's more like a ponty, but I have checked it and it has got enough stretch in it. It's only got two way stretch, but it feels like it's about 50%. So I think just as a great sort of wardrobe basic, which although they don't sound exciting wardrobe basics, they are the things that sometimes us sewers can sort of overlook because we get overexcited by all the fabulous prints or you know the designs that have something a little bit extra about them and yet actually these kind of core basics are the sort of thing that we wear all the time. Um, so I'm either going to make it out of that just off-white ponty or I've got this which I love. This came from Bornella Fabrics. I have, there you go, that's proof. Uh, I have, you see, look, it's got this kind of mid-century print on it. A Largo tank out of this would be great. Um, sorry, does everyone else do that? And you've got a few bits that are just big enough that, they, oh, look, it's a bodice. <laughs> just big enough they might be useful. You tuck them in with the rest of the fabric. <laughs> um, also on the Itch to Stitch website, which either of these fabrics would be good for, under their free patterns is the Uvita top, which is a standard long sleeve, little bit. Well, it's not as tight as this. This is the Barbie top from Gertie. Um, but it's a fairly standard round neck. I think it might be raglan sleeved, um, long sleeve top. And that's a really good alternative to use any jersey fabric or knit fabric because unless you're living somewhere lovely and tropical, spring doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be warm. And because of the UK weather, I wanted to include another garment that would either serve as a jacket or an extra layer to wear over my tank. And what I was really wanting to make is a bomber jacket. Again, it's a kind of trend item this year, although bomber jackets seem to come up every few years as a this year's new trendy jacket, and yet we all wore them when we were, well I did, when I was a teenager. Now, I have found two really nice looking bomber jacket patterns. One is at, um, so, well I'm not sure what the, the actual magazine is called, but the website is So Mag, and it's a satin bomber. It is lined um, and it's a more cropped length, although to lengthen it is really not going to be very tricky. Um, it's a really nice shape and a really good, um, regardless of the whole trend thing, a really good jacket for this time of year where, you know, that's just an easy, very casual jacket that you can wear with pretty much anything, you know, with jeans or with a nice denim maxi skirt. And I really like this pattern. The only thing is, obviously these are all going to be linked in the description box. The only thing is, it's not a great size range. I think it comes in a small, medium and large. And the large was a 96 bust. Well, that is me. And if I'm a large, then we're really not including, quite frankly, the majority of people, are we? So I had a look for another one, and this one I found on the Mood Society website. So Mood, a lot of us have heard of Mood because of, um, what do they call it, Fashion Runway? Fashion? Project Runway, there we go. Because um, they always go to Mood to get their fabrics, don't they? You will hear a lot about Mood Society again on this challenge because they have a huge library of free sewing patterns. I would say that the majority of the time they do suggest you need way more fabric than you really do, but being as they're a company selling fabric, you can kind of understand why they might do that. Just wanted to check what it's called, and it's the Avalia, Avalia, not sure of the pronunciation, 
Um, again, description box will have all the links. Um, and again, it's lined. So in this case, you're going to have to raise your stash for outer fabric lining and a front zip and the ribbing that you need for the cuffs and the neckline. If you've ever done anything or haven't ever done anything with that neckline that you've got on a bomber with the ribbing that kind of goes in to, you know, the edges there, don't be put off. I made a um, Parker, the Merchant Mills Parker that has that neckline and it looks so professional and actually it's really easy to sew. Um, but in my case, I didn't quite have the right combination of fabrics. Although I've got ribbing, it doesn't match the fabric that I wanted to use. So I've had to kind of move on to an alternative. But I'll show you the sort of thing I had in mind. So obviously you can do um, make it out of satin or uh, a jacquard or, you know, a really nice kind of fancier fabric or you could make it out of um, something a little bit more work weary. I always think of um, bomber jackets as when I was a kid, they were often that kind of olive green and then they had an orange lining. <laughs> um, so you can do whatever you like with it. I was considering omitting the lining and potentially just drafting a facing if I needed to. Um, but I was thinking more of a kind of warmer, fabric. So these are the fabrics I would have used had I had the correct matching ribbing. So I've got this wool. I don't think it's 100% wool by any means because I can tell I've pre-washed it. That's always a giveaway. Um, so it's a mid-weight wool and I think that would have been great for me because I wear lots of these kind of autumnal colours. Um, alternatively, I've got this one here, which came from Fabworks, which is a similar sort of thing. Um, I've seen them made out, really ideally, I think I would have liked something a little bit lighter. So maybe a camel shade or even something more beigey. Um, yeah, something that would keep you warm on colder days. Uh, ribbing wise, I've got, you see, look, these are the ribbings that I've got left over from yeah other things but I didn't really feel that brown fabric <laughs> with the green that was a bit much not quite the right tone that would have been okay but not very spring like no not for me that's left over from my parka and those work well but again it's spring in the UK and for me that wasn't really going to work so I've had to think about alternatives, but I really wanted to include these two patterns, or particularly the, the mood one, just because it's a bit more size inclusive, um, just because that um, bomber jacket style is so much around at the moment. Um, so my alternative, and if you know my channel at all, you're gonna know what I'm gonna say, was to look for a shirt. Um, I noticed, <laughs> Shirt patterns are one of my favourite things to sew and I noticed that some of the, um, yeah, the, the magazines and all the posts about the forthcoming trends are uh, very 90s focused and there's a talk about the return of the plaid shirt. I certainly wore lots of plaid shirts when I was in my teens, which was in the 80s, not the 90s. Um, I have this fabric which is this Robert Kaufman fabric and I have been dying to use it. I bought it quite a while ago um, I think from Minerva. Yes it is because it's still got the tag on it. Um, yeah been absolutely I don't know why I've taken so long to use it so I really want to make a plaid shirt and I had a hunt for a shirt pattern and again, I have found a likely looking candidate on the Mood Society website. I think it's called the Melia. I'm going to check that because I keep getting the names wrong. Hold on. I got it right this time. It is the Melia shirt. So we'll have to do a little bit of hacking in order to get this to look more like the kind of plaid or flannel shirt that I had in mind, only because this pattern has a really interesting sleeve detail. It's a standard 
sleeve to about here-ish and then from here down it goes into a puff sleeve which is not going to work for my you know my idea but also really easy to hack because instead of you know taking that piece I'll just move that piece out of the way and elongate the existing sleeve piece so I'm not really I don't really feel that's a major hack or it would need huge amounts of experience I think the collar I might want to tweak the collar a little bit but actually the rest of it is all there I really like this pattern and I thought it might be quite a good one to make kind of regardless of the whole flannel shirt idea so I did dig out a couple of other fabrics that I have that I would use um, I've been dying I've got this green stripy hold on let's hope that's focused in um, yeah I seem to have two pieces of green stripy fabric um, I've had that in my stash for a very long time I think it was last year that I made I've got an orange stripe shirt that I made and I wear that all the time all year round and obviously green as you may know is one of my favorite colors uh, I love green and white together I think they look really fresh um, so I may make that same Melia shirt um, out of the green stripe. I might even keep the puffy sleeve at the bottom half. I don't know yet. <laughs> Watch this space. Wait till the 31st of March, reveal day. Those are my options. If I made the denim skirt and a tank and a shirt to wear over the top of it, that would give me a whole outfit. Whether I manage to do all of that between now and the end of March, I highly doubt, to be honest. But I would like to, at the very least, get the denim skirt done. Keep looking for the hashtag, so frugal23, I nearly said 22 there. Um, and if you do enter, as I said, there are a huge number of potential prizes out there that you may win. Um, I can't remember who's doing the next vlog I will put a graphic up <laughs> um, but yeah really good idea to keep looking at the hashtag here on YouTube and over on Instagram I think if you're making something and you want to post some pictures of your work in progress you could use hashtag so frugal 23 whip WIP um, I think some people are already beginning to do that so it's quite a nice one to keep on top of I think it's also really nice to check out the companies behind the free patterns. I think obviously that's why they produce the free patterns in the first place is to get our attention. Um, but it is quite nice to go and check out the websites and see who's behind them. You know, all part of the same community, aren't we? So that's my ideas. If any of you make any of these patterns that I've suggested, please, and you are on Instagram, please tag me. I love seeing things that people have made. I really, really enjoy that. So thank you very much for watching. Links in the description box below, as I said. I will see you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.